What's good, everybody? My name is Mr. Peters. In our video today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to evaluate functions, and I'm going to break down what f of x means and how to actually evaluate these functions. So first off, guys, just remember that f of x is it's the same thing as y, okay? It's just a different notation we use for functions. And when we have a problem like the one in front of us, Typically what they do, right? Let's just put a comma and in, in, uh, this out to the side. They say find f of negative 2. And let's see, they also say find f of 3. So what exactly does that mean? So guys, when we have a function, what we're going to do is we're going to take that number inside the parentheses, which the first one is negative 2. And in our function, we're going to plug it everywhere that we see x, which I'm highlighting. And this is how this problem is going to break down. So we're saying when x is negative 2, right? That's what f of, f of x means. When x is negative 2, the input is negative 2, right? We substitute negative 2 squared minus 5 times negative 2 plus 7. So that's the very first step. We need to make sure we take that number inside the parentheses and plug it into our function. Now that we've done that, guys, this problem turns in, it becomes a lot more simpler. And I'm going to show you guys how. We're going to use order of operations and simplify the right-hand side. The left-hand side, f of negative 2, will stay the same the whole time. So we're going to say f of negative 2 is equal to 4 plus 10 plus 7. And when we add this all up, guys, our answer is going to be f of negative 2 is equal to... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Quick mental break. I, I overthought the problem. 21. So this is our answer right here. That's it. And what this is saying is, hey, when our independent variable x is negative 2, the output or the answer to the function is going to be 21, all right? And we're going to look at one more problem before we wrap this on up and just hit a, hit a few key takeaways that you guys have to know for evaluating functions. So in our second problem, we have, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. I got ahead of myself. Let's, let's also do positive 3. So we have f of, neg of positive 3, and this is equal to, and it's the same process. We're going to substitute 3 everywhere that we see x, and we'll use order of operations to simplify. So when x is 3, let's see, what will our answer be? Right? We went through, we evaluated 3 squared is 9, 5 times 3 is 15. So we know f of 3 is equal to, let's see, negative 6 plus 7. So f of 3 is equal to 1. And that's all that's happening, guys. Each input that we put into this function is going to spit out an output. And this is typically what functions are, okay? And we're going to look at one more problem, and then we'll wrap it up, like I said. So in our second problem... We have f of x is equal to, and then yeah, this one is also 2. So let's, let's write this function out. 2x squared. All right. So same concept, just different steps. So we want to find f of 2. So we're saying that when our input is 2, what will the output be in this function? So step 1, right, we're going to plug those values in, right? After we do that, let's see what we're going to get. Let's make sure this is correct. All right, so we substituted, we plugged everything in. Now we're going to use the order of operations and we're going to simplify. And guys, just remember, with this very first step, parentheses, exponents is going to come before multiplication, okay? 
typically with functions, that's that's where the mistake happens. Is just minor errors on following that order of operations process. So after we start evaluating, right, we're gonna have eight plus eight minus nine. And we'll say that f of two is equal to 16 minus nine, which will give us a answer of seven. All right, so before we wrap this up today, guys, some very important things. Like I told you guys, when we're evaluating functions, you're gonna see f of x, g of x, h of x. You, you'll see those very common, but all it's, it's just notation, guys. It's the same thing as y. So please remember that. Also remember that the independent variable is our x, dependent variable is our y. And when we're talking about domain and range, Domain is the set of all values, the set of all input values, right? So the domain is our X. And when we talk about range, the range is the list of outputs, the set of outputs for the function. And we are going to talk about domain and range also. So please make sure you look out for that video. This is Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters, Evaluating Functions. If you like this video, we're going to ask that you subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Thank you.